courtesy of ex berliner Cursive explanation says the following Hush, Berlin's empty dance floor is a photo series. Did I cover this before? It feels like something I might have spoken about before. But regardless of the fame, let's just quickly go through this one. It says numbers don't lie. In 2019, the club commission reported that 3 million tourists traveled to Berlin in previous. <sighs> He's hearing that. If numbers don't lie. In 2019, the club commission reported that 3 million club tourists traveled to Berlin in the previous year. On average, they spent 205 euros a day and provided an annual turnover of 1.48 billion euros. Berliners, um, Berlin's not on, is not only, sorry, I'm going to say it again. Berlin not only likes to wear its techno culture as a badge of honor, it also likes to feel the prestige in its wallet. Interestingly, very few operates interestingly very few operators want to or can make big money with their club which is interesting right a lot of people come through the doors record numbers record revenue generated but actual making of money very hard to do which is quite admirable which means a lot of those clubs especially outside of the bigger ones they're mostly doing it out of love which is sick i think people say that a lot about festivals i think maybe i read a story about that when it comes to that festival in i'm not sure if it's in berlin it might be in leipzig or one of these places right where essentially it's, oh it's a festival called hole it's an lgbt lgbtq friendly festival called hole or maybe a queer festival i don't know what the term is exactly but it's amazing right backdrop because it's basically set against what looks like some sort of factory maybe a steel factory or something along those kind of lines a m massive rusted building in the background a pond where everyone goes to dance at and obviously different tents where you can go listen to music and stages and whatnot and i remember them saying when the when the covid kind of hit and they were trying to raise money part of the reason, part of the you know uh text that they basically wrote was like saying hey throughout the entire time that we've done this festival let's say three or four years they've never ever made money once they've just kind of did it to broke even uh, but also mostly to provide a safe space for people, uh, you know, within that queer community, which is so, so cool that they'd go to all those lengths, take on all that risk just to put on a party so people that are like themselves can feel comfortable. At. I think that's super, super admirable. It really is. It continues here. And of course, I'd imagine a lot of it, you know, the clout of it is also is amazing, right? I'd love to own a bar and just break even and be able to book all my favorite artists because it would mean I'd be the flipping Don Dada within London, right? I'll be the kind of go-to guy, right? That's awesome to have. And who wouldn't want to have a festival that they're owning and operating and able to kind of put their friends on, organize it and all that good stuff. It's all great. So it continues here. Now in year two of the COVID-19 pandemic, which is mad to think how quickly time has gone, the city's dance temples have been on life support since March 2020. Berlin's cultural administration says that an average of 81,000 million, 81,000 million, what am I, what's wrong? Why am I talking so weird today? 81,000 euros um, was paid out per club during the first, how would you pronounce that? Sofort, Sofort Lief, Sofort Lief emergency aid distribution. According to Watergate Club, only 25,000 euros arrived, while Yam claims to have only received 31,000 euros. <clears throat> At the same time, party girls are missing huge, a therapeutic part of their lives. Others arguably are benefiting from the hedonistic pause. But for those who operate each club, those um, who cultivate the famous club scene of their creativity and know how more than just their jobs, the clubs are also a home for them. Hush! Berlin's club culture in a time of silence by Partas Verlag captures the bleak new reality. Photographer Mary Stattergag and journalist Tomo Stein visited a total of 42 Berlin clubs from April 2020 to January 21. Documenting the Berlin suspended subculture, not only did they meet with the club managers, but also bookers, bartenders and DJs and cleaners and security staff, people who made the club's unique spaces we know. That is so cool, right? Look at all the empty places. Empty dance floor at Schwarz, how you pronounce that? Um, I guess that's Watergate, the famous lights here as well. We continue. We've got the outside of Gretchen. Like, how cool is that? I remember when I was taking pictures quite religiously of the clubbing adventures that I had. My plan was to put together a little zine, which I did produce in a really limited run. But, you know, they were all sold out for now. But I'm going to do some more later. And I essentially took loads of pictures of, you know, me going out on the night out and just kind of the whole experience of nightlife and meeting different people and collated them all in. And then I had these audio clippings I then transcribed and kind of had them in accompanying pieces. And to look back on that sort of stuff is super cool, man, because it definitely does provide you with a time capsule 
of the time that you were going through in life, you know, because most of those clubs I went to, most of those, you know, warehouse spaces I went to, they are no longer around. Some of the promoters don't even do any more parties anymore. So it's a completely great thing to kind of go back into the archives and be like, oh my God, wow, I remember doing this. This is so cool. So it's quite interesting as well to see these spaces, sans people, sans atmosphere, um, you know, and bleakness that is COVID lockdowns where it essentially looks like a zombie apocalypse, isn't it really? How everything is just desolate. Oh, wow. They got a picture um, inside. Which one we it? And at Berber. Wow, really good. Let's continue here. Many people come to Berlin to put down their roots in the music and club culture. Some of them are also lonely souls, says photographer Statgat. Tells us that when these places, um, colleagues and guests fall away, it leaves no trace. Statgat knows that scene very well. She worked at Trezor for years. The photographer captured the emptiness of the venue and shot portraits of people in their favorite corner of the club. Journalist Stein wrote down their stories. I'm definitely going to get this book. This sounds crazy good. Um, Stein pens political text for... Uh, renowned media publications but parting is not his thing i've lived in berlin for 10 years and i can count on one hand wow that's great what well, emmy because i've been to stan says but i do have to share the infusion of music uh, to be fascinated by people people who go through an idea with a passion you can get more than that mate imagine living in berlin and just not caring about the parties at all that would be so weird, isn't it? That'd be so trippy. That'd be, it's quite cool, to be honest, because it does, you know, differentiate you from everybody else who's constantly going on about Bergheim, myself included, and other sort of places. But just imagine living day to day in Berlin and just not giving one toss about the clubs and just living your life doing other things. That's a, but that's a, one of the great things about Berlin, similar to London in a way, but London can sometimes be a little bit too, you have to maybe plan too many things and always buy tickets to go in certain cases, but it's the best city for spontaneity. Like, and it's also the best city in terms of doing the thing that you want to do. Like there's loads of different scenes. Like if you just want to go to like a, you know, a sort of soho -y type of club, there's places that you can go. If you just want to hang out in, you know, sports bars, you can go there. If you just want to watch football and what, you know, view other sports, you can do that too. If you want to skate, you can go and do that. If you want to hang out with some fashion people, you can go and do that. Like there's different scenes that you can go and basically, um, you know, immerse yourself in without even touching anything that has to do with techno music. Nothing whatsoever, which is really, really cool. It continues to hear. In the biggest crisis of this model, of this business, of their business model, he says they have always been sympathetic to the political measures containing the virus and tried everything you know, to continue to exist. Outdoor areas were opened, food services were offered, clubs were converted to bars or opened virtually. Just imagine, that's Kit Kat, right? Just imagine sitting in that pool at Kit Kat. That must be full of so much gunk. Imagine on an actual good day, like, wow 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 i really want to go but god damn it don't go snorkeling after 12 <laughs> after 12 a.m <laughs> which is one of the people who got to space a book is um kirsten gruger the legendary owner and bouncer of Kit Kat. in the book she told the story of how she came from the swabian alps to berlin as a school failure and set up Kit Kat with simon tura uh, or Tower, I forget how you pronounce his name. Today, with a monthly rent of twenty thousand, she has a, a, a what's the thing called? She has accumulated a pile of shitty debts, according to Gruger. She appeared to she appeared for the interview in Wellies, and she was returning from the Haas Mountains, where she's building a city on a old fashioned on an old industrial site, including a techno cave. Oh wow! Look at her, big up her. That's her club manager. And DJ Lily opened the Christas. No, that's a different one. Club manager and DJ Lily opened the Christas Kupfer Club with hope of start of 2020. Then came the pandemic. Okay, it's so another club opening up. Jesus, I can't wait to visit that one. Many club operators are fighting for survival, but for some, the plug was already pulled before the pandemic began. The quote says, We also visited two clubs whose demise is already sealed or foreseeable, says Stein. About blank and rumors book. About blank f closing forever is just oh, so terrible. The former will eventually fall victim to a motorway extension. Rumors Butch will have to make way for a water park. Oh, Jesus Christ, a new building by autumn at the latest. Um, they know the party is finite, and yet they put an incredible amount of energy and money into it, shimmying from lease to lease in the hope that they can still keep on going. So, not only is the party in Infinite, uh, finite, sorry, but the pers pers perseverance of the people behind the party. At least that's what Stack at fears. He says, I'm worried that some people will run out of steam, um, that they will collapse and not return, have the strength to fight on and, and reinvent themselves. This fear is real, and there have already been cases of members of the scene taking their own lives. 
tragic to say that but definitely something that we can definitely understand why that would happen especially if your life completely revolves around the nightlife and that whole part of your life is completely taken away from you and there is no real avenue for that to come back it's kind of it could be tragic it says the prognosis is rather bleak pamela Sh pamela schuber is it or Shub or shubes shubes because i'm sure this b is double s in it right so that should be pamela shobes uh, chairwoman of the Berlin Club Commission and head of Gretchen does not believe that the pre-corona situation will be reached before the end of 2022, which is a lot of people have been saying. Um, Hush Berlin Club culture, a time of silence is more than a memorial to an entire scene. It is a documentation of the fates and anecdotes of people and institutions that are rather unique and even in Berlin, which is equally saturated with a rich contemporary history. The 360-page book is published by Partas Verlag and costs 30 euros. All proceeds go to the cake so go to participate in berlin clubs which is great to see in it so definitely check that out hush berlin's club culture in a time of silence definitely a great book i think it's going to be a um a little great little time capsule to kind of see how people were basically going through this difficult time and also provide some hope for the future also provide some hope 